Hey guys, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 38. My finger's getting better, by the way. 38. Yeah, we've been, we've been doing this for over a year and a half, and we just don't run out of stuff to talk about. No, we never do. We never do. We never do. We never do. And we got lots of stuff to talk about tonight. Reflection filters, Zoom, the NTG4 versus the NTG5 techniques, all sorts of cool stuff you got in there. That's right. And I come up with all that minutes before the show. Uh, you, had, <laughs> you, you had time to work on it this week. We're also going to talk about software and simple software or complex software. Hmm. Interesting discussion. Plus a bunch of your questions coming up right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk! From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. And it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop because I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS, BS Tech Talk. This is the time when George and I get to be Dan and George, because this is what we do when we get together. Aside from talking about other crap, we, this we, the we, 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 genesis of the show. That's right. We're talking about this. Thing. It's like, well, the, you know, this client asked this and this person asked that we got this piece of equipment and, and it, 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 we could go on for hours. Why and, do people make it so complicated? I know. Why do they keep using Pro Tools? <laughs> on and on. And then on and on and on. Anyway, but if you need help with your home studio. I mean, there's no question about it. There's only one place to go. Well, there's two places, actually. You can talk to, to George. You can talk to me because nobody knows more about home voiceover studios than the two of us. Because combined, we have seven centuries of knowledge about how it is you put together. It seems to add up because that's all we do all day is we talk to people on, on, on Zoom or we're answering questions on email. We've, we've seen it all. We've seen it all, haven't we? It seems that way. I mean, I once in a blue moon, a, a curveball comes at me. I'm like, I honestly have never seen that happen before. And people usually hang their head and go, oh, no. <laughs> but it's so, it's incredibly rare. That's for sure. We've seen pretty much everything. Every voiceover studio. Yeah. And because of that, people will ask a question like, oh, we know the answer to that. I mean, and usually, we usually do. It's like, oh, we've experienced that. There's nothing new under the sun. Even upon just hearing, just hearing the audio. Right. It's like, oh, we know what's wrong with that. You know, it's like, you you know, you, you live in Chicago and you have a window open next to the L, you know, yeah, so. That one's not so hard to pick out. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I, I got, I had somebody called me this week and said, I'm, tr I want to be able to, uh, uh, it rains where I am. And I've got a studio in a garage, and I it, the only problem is is that I hear noise when it rains. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I can do about that? 
And I said, move to Southern California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or <laughs> time it between rain. It's just like, or be patient. <laughs> I, I think that's one of the things is people, it's going to be noisy at for 30 seconds. So stop. But these are the logical things that we talk about. And, and we, we talk you off the ledge. And if you want help with your home studio, if you're starting from ground zero, you have no idea what it is you're doing, best to talk to somebody who actually knows what they're doing because that's all they do. So you can talk to George. You can talk to me. If you want to talk to George, where do you go? You go to georgev.tech is my domain to find all my services, which can be booked live uh, on the Zoom. Zoom. Much Zoom. All of it's happening on Zoom now. Um, or uh, we can do virtual stuff where you send me your files and I virtually engineer for you, setting up processing and filters and things that work well for certain aud genres and auditions and such and such. Uh, or design a studio from the ground up if you're lucky enough to be ready to really spend some money um i can help you with all of that and dan does a lot of the same stuff if you want to go use his specimen specimen cup head over to homevoiceoverstudio.com there it is right there homevoiceoverstudio.com i've got my specimen collection cup i'll listen to your audio for 25 dollars. i'll give you more than you want to hear uh but generally i'll listen to something and within like we're always talking Three to five seconds, I know what's going on in there. You know, are you under a shelf? You know, yeah, that's, that's it's like, are you under a shelf? Good because it becomes obvious after very, very quickly that what's going on. You can hear the shape of a room, you can hear the size of a room. Most of you guys don't really know what to listen for. And yeah, if, a lot of people haven't had the luxury of working in professional studios or, you know, commercial studios. And really hearing themselves in that context. Exactly. They, they just don't know what it's supposed to sound like. Right. So you're an untrained ear. These are four trained ears. So that's the place to go. So check us out. And uh, that's why we're here. We're here for you. And let's get into the meat of tonight's matter. That sounds almost delicious. Uh, what's in your tech update this week? <laughs> Well, you know, this is in no real particular order, but the first thing that, you know, popped into my radar from a job today was, you know, those things that P they sell you at the Banjo Emporium to stick behind your microphone you or mean, now yep. increasingly on Amazon. Yeah. Those reflection filter mud flap backstop thingamabobs. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the ones that are designed properly to do what they're supposed to do don't work great. The ones that were designed that are just knockoffs of what they think they actually do, but they don't know what they actually do. So they make something that looks like the real thing. They don't do anything. Um, so but most of the time when I see those in a booth, they, they either color the sound of the microphone in a negative way, or they absolutely have zero effect. They're basically acoustically transparent, like putting a piece of foam behind you should all of a sudden change the sound of your microphone it just doesn't do anything. it doesn't do so nothing. they rarely just get rid of them guys especially you folks in your uh blanket forts and your walk-in closets they just don't do a dang thing okay rat little mini rant over somebody mentioned about zoom audio being asked to be usable for recordings like people saying can i i just i'm just going to record you over zoom for this what is the situation where Zoom audio would be deemed usable for anything professional or production quality? I'm really thinking the only time it could be useful would be for AM radio, because that's almost about the equivalent fidelity that you're going to get out of a Zoom or any kind of video audio conference tool. You know, it, the quality of the audio. Yeah, you're going to sound like you're coming out no, of that. This is, yes. This, by the way, this is one that George A. Woodham sent me at a, from a flea market, and I've got it working. Oh, cool. Yeah. Check it out. That's pretty neat. What was it called? I couldn't read the name. It, oh, it's it's an Emerson 760, I think, from about 1952. Emerson. Okay, cool. Um, 
little piece of trivia my first home stereo like my parents bought me and they had the record player on the top you know cassette in the front Mm -hmm. was an emerson so i don't even know if my dad remembers that but it's kind of neat so anyway those uh those zoom recordings useless record on your end and send them the file trust me it's the way to go um Adobe Audition, I just, I, I right before the show, I scour Facebook groups to see what's popping up. And Jack Daniels said on the on the Audition Facebook group that a new update to Adobe Audition, probably the latest, the latest bleeding edge, which I know Jack, he loves using the newest, latest thing, um, caused him some real issues. Now, in his case, he was, he was using an Apollo system uh-huh. that could have something to do with it. I don't know. But anyway, he had to roll back to a previous version and recover settings that he had lost in the process. It was a big old mess. Jack. So just be a little bit aware and mindful before updating, even things like Adobe Audition that send you new updates all the time. Be very aware, and especially with their, their um, there seems to be a tendency of when you install new versions of it sometimes overwriting the XML file, which is where all of your racks maybe even your favorites, things that you might use every single audition are stored and can get lost. Mm. If you don't know where those are stored, find out and make a backup. Yeah, that's and If you're not backing up your system, you're crazy. Yeah, That's only happened to me once, though. You know, it only I, has to happen once. Right. But, I, <laughs> I didn't, but I'm like, eh, I'll, so I'll get to reset them. It's fine. <laughs> I guess some people use a lot of them. Yeah. If it's in the middle of a... Per- anyway, I think Jack's taking one for the team here because I didn't ask him permission to mention his name, but he's no, he knows us. You know, you never update your software on the, during a business day or at the beginning of a business week. It's just not not in the middle of a project. Idea. Not a good idea. So be be very very careful with that stuff. Um, microphones. I just I'm just finding that the I've been recommending the Rode NTG4 shotgun mic um, quite a lot lately. I'm um, having been using it now for a while. I found that it's a pretty flat mic, meaning it's not naturally bright. And so I find it's helping a lot with folks who are already using overly bright microphones. So that's one thing I've been happy about it with. And also being a shotgun mic, it rejects more ambient background noise, definitely more so than a normal large diaphragm condenser uh, cardioid microphone does. So it's kind of been a two for one win for a lot of folks and at around $300 and I keep, I keep recommending them and they keep showing up on, on, uh, on Amazon for about $300 prime shipping. So good on your road. They're keeping these things in stock somehow. It's a really great one. The new one, the NTG five just takes the quality of the mic and takes it up a peg in terms of just a little bit of upper frequency detail. It's more sensitive. It uses actually a lot less gain, considerably ah, less gain, which is, which is interesting for a road. Yeah, yeah, it's very sensitive. Uh, the NTG five is, um, but you could be quite happy with either one. So it's two hundred dollars more for the five. So if you're a little budget conscious, check out the NTG four. So um, really, really, uh, just had really good luck with, with those mics the last uh, six months or so. Um, uh, just another random topic. How about recording your voice for video game characters? Um, you know, it's it, one of the things that's a technique that's used by studios quite often is that they don't use just one microphone when you're voice acting in a studio for video game characters. And sometimes I think this is also used for animation. Um, and the reason for that is a, it's multiple folds of reasons here. One reason is just simply having a backup microphone. So if something goes wrong, and that namely is going to be clipping or distortion happens on one mic, the other microphone is going to be either a little bit lower gain or a lot lower. So it's not going to clip when the first one does, or it might be further away. So it picture, it captures a different sort of sound of your voice, a distant sound of your voice. So they're recording it on two separate tracks. For each and yes, mic. that is the key. They are definitely recording to separate tracks. But you can kind of emulate this a little bit with your most of your home setups and your interfaces. Now, I think you need to be a little careful about doing this because 
Let's say, for example, we're using a Scarlett 2i2. Let's use this as an example. You could take one microphone and split it into channel one and channel two of your Scarlett. Here's the sticky part. If you're just using a normal passive, uh, what do you call a splitter? That's just two pairs of wires that are sewn together. It looks like a Y. Normally you have to use phantom power on only one of those channels. If you had phantom on both, the two phantom power signals are gonna literally short each other out and that could blow out your interface. So if you wanna do this technique, you might need to find a splitter that has something called a transformer in it or also called an isolated splitter. Um, but you can try this and then you can record one mic into two channels into your software. Twisted Wave can do this. You can record a stereo file and have left and right and just run the right channel eh, like 10 dB or so lower than the left. And so that's a way to do it. Yeah. Now, Dan, are you holding a phantom power supply? I am a Rolls phantom power supply. Just happen to have one in the drawer nearby. There's another way to do it. You could turn off the phantom power on your Scarlet, plug a little phantom power supply like that into one side of the splitter. And that way only the microphone's getting power from one power source. So again, I be careful if you're gonna do this. If you wanna try it out, Talk to Dan or I about how to set it up for your specific equipment. But now you can record two channels, one much lower than the other, and have a safety track. And uh, I, I haven't been told that this is super popular. Um, I'm not being told that clients are being asked to do this, or voice actors, I should say, are being asked to do this. But it just seems like a, a really pretty easy way to deal with this and still get good levels when doing uh, video games. Um, there's actually an interface that has this feature built in even. We've talked about it many times on the show. It's the Centrance MicPort Pro 2. And if you record it with the limiter on and it in stereo and you record a stereo file, channel one is the normal file and channel two, or the, if you're recording in Twisted Wave, for example, left is normal, right is down, I think, minus 12 dB, something like that. And so you get that safety track built right in. It's just part of the unit. So pretty sweet feature and could save you from having to do another take on that character voice. Um, a couple more things. Um, this also came up recently. Those springs on some of our mic arms, like this one right here, they might sound like a guitar reverb <laughs> for some, <laughs> in some cases. If that's the case for you, I, I haven't experienced that specifically with this mic arm. Um, but if you do have that issue in your studio, just wrap the springs with some tape, maybe electrical tape, even duct tape, anything that will dampen the vibration of those springs. That's uh, an easy fix. Um, I've even used little Velcro wire ties. Just one lap loop around each of the springs eliminates the spring reverb effect of your mic arm. So try that. Um, wrapping this up, wireless mics are fine, but avoid the Bluetooth ones. So not all wireless mics are the same. Wireless mice are the same. Some wireless mice are like the Apple ones, actually Bluetooth. And a lot of them are, have their own little tiny USB receiver dongle thing that they come with. And those I find are way more reliable than the Bluetooth mice. So if you want to be in your booth and your computer's outside, and you want to be able to start and stop or mess with something on the computer, try like those just $20, $30 Logitech wireless mics. Why do I say mics? Mice. <laughs> the wireless <laughs> mice with the USB receivers. I find them way more reliable. So anyway, that's it for all my techie tech tip stuff. Yes. Dan and I were going to talk about software, but I wanted to say one more thing, and that is about mic placement in small booths now it's, dan dan and i years ago did a video that was it, it's still hugely hugely successful on youtube and it's a shot it's a microphone shootout video and we tried a whole bunch of microphones at two different mic placements one was far like this and one was closer something like this like that yeah yeah now i i i've been recommending that fist distant distance lately to people in small booths or smaller spaces. Dan, what have you found? What are you recommending to people working in different size spaces? How are you, how are you figuring out distance to the mic 
uh, for different situations. Cause I'm finding this placement is working a lot more than I, than for this placement right. in a lot of cases. Right. Well, I mean, the, generally what I do is, as we know, every room is different. Every voice is different. Every, you know, as we had Mark Cashman on last week talking about, uh, your different volumes of voices and mic proximity is a very, very important thing. What I try to do is I, I, I'll, I'll start from here. And if someone sounds too distant, uh, based on what type of voice they're using, I'll say, all right, get it an inch closer, get a little bit closer, you know, as opposed yeah, you know, I mean, you can start close and move back or you can start far back and move in, but you got to find that sweet spot that's there. And it's a pretty small sweet spot, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a pretty small. It's, it's a couple of inches. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, it's not a, it's not, it's not a big distance thing when you're in a small, small space. Right. So, so but like small adjustment, right. Every room is different and every home voiceover studio, no matter what the design, whether it's the Taj Mahal of voiceover booths or it's a blanket fort, it's individual to you and the quality of your voice. So when you talk to George or I, we're going to get you to the right proximity where your voice is picked up properly and at different volumes, in which case, you know, you might use proximity differently or adjust volumes. And those are all the suggestions that we'll give you to make sure that your, your levels are staying consistent and that the mic is picking you up from its sweet spot. There you go. Count point, counterpoint. <laughs> Sometimes we have a little debate. That's about as debatey as I get right. <laughs> on the show. I mean, but we... no, it's not a debate. It's just a matter of your of of a very specific adjustment and your specific situation. So that's why right. we we do this. We we you know, it's not a cookie cutter thing. We give these guidelines, but you have to still adjust right to and, where it sounds best. Right, and we will follow up with you. I mean, you you send us samples after we work with you. It's like eh, maybe an inch closer. Maybe you're a tad. You know, it's everything right. has to be tuned and really set to you. Anyway. That's right. A uh, little talk about software because the, ra the the debate continues on the Facebook forums and various other places about, oh, this is the best thing for voiceover. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very hotly debated topic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because what's best is, of course, highly subjective because best for what? You know, the old argument was, well, Pro Tools is the industry standard. And I would hear that and go, what industry are you talking about? So right. if you're starting off as a voice actor, are you mixing a 24 track uh, soundtrack to some big movie or, you know, Linkin Park's next album or that's no one track mono, one track mono. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and why would you need 24 tracks unless you are doing sophisticated production? Now, there are some that will argue that, well, I need, you know, I'll put things on different tracks and different styles for different, different styles. And generally, I think what I found is if somebody learned on a certain system and they are proficient at it, that's fine. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, the only times I'm finding that specific software is legitimately being request, it, requested is for work to picture, you know, video production, right. where you have to be able to see video playing in sync with the voice. Right. Um, and for that, because there are no just single track editing softwares that have that capability that I'm aware of, you do have to use a multi-track environment for that. I think I, I'm not aware of anything as simple as sound forge or twisted wave that allow you to have video sync with it. So you have to have that multi-track doll for that specific kind of work. Right. And that, um, the and good news is you don't have to use that software for everything though. You could get, for example, Reaper and just set it up just for that purpose. Um, you know, it's not that hard to do with a little bit of tutelage. But don't worry about it. Your whole life doesn't have to revolve around that one program for the, it's, it's a specialty tool for that one special case. Right. And that's, that's more of a recent phenomenon because people can't go in the studios and they're right. being forced to do this. So I'm thinking some smart entrepreneurial software engineer out there is creating some software that will really help us voice actors 
be able to do that somewhat seamlessly. First Elements is doing it. I'll tell you, they got some new tools that have, are, are making that kind of thing easier for for the voice actor. And well, not just for the voice actor, but for the producer. Right. Um, you know, they've got, I think the newest thing they have out is called, let's see, uh, Source RTL. Wow. And uh, it's a is a remote timeline a workflow for remote ADR oh. using Source Connect and RTS, which is remote time sync, timeline sync, uh, that doesn't require the talent to operate a DAW. Right. They only have to have Source Connect to do this. So they are finding a ways where the actor doesn't have to have anything complicated, Reaper, Pro Tools, et cetera. They just have to have Source Connect. So, um, yeah, they are, they're working on this already. This, there's a demand, and they are meeting it with tools like this. All right. They say, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. So that's what happens there. So I, I, I guess the bottom line on this is if you're starting out and someone says, this is the best software that you need to use, it may not be the best suggestion because they're telling you to buy, as I like to say, a control room for a nuclear reactor to control right. a hamster running in a wheel. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty simple. There, yeah. You, it's, it's not, it's not that these more sophisticated and complex software packages and DAWs sound better. It's that they have more features to do more things that rarely have a whole heck of a lot to do with voiceover. Yeah. Uh, more and if, flexible, blah, blah, blah. More right. features, more bells and whistles. Right. But it's going to take you longer to learn that than it is to hit record and go with something like Twisted Wave or Audacity, because essentially all you're doing is using a cassette recorder. Longer to learn and harder to troubleshoot when th exact things go wrong, and there's just more stuff to go wrong, the more complicated the program. So they tend to be just a little bit more high, high maintenance. Mm. Okay. All right. Killed that. I think that brings that to a nice conclusion. We got lots of questions from you guys. Gotta love it. Thanks for writing Whoa. those in. We're going to take a quick break here, and we'll get to those questions right after those. So stay tuned. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control, and it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Show. Well, as I mentioned before in the show, we have this uh, 
amazing company that supports us, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect and other tools. I mentioned, as I said, they, they're not just making Source Connect, which you already should have by now. Why don't you have it? You don't even have a demo of it yet? What are you doing? I thought you were a professional voiceover. Go get it. Source-elements.com, dot, dot, dot. Um, but anyway, they have a new tool, and I mentioned it earlier in the show, and that's Source-RTL, Remote Timeline is what that stands for. And this is a great tool that if you're being asked to do ADR work from home, you don't have to have Pro Tools or Reaper or Source One or Studio One, it's called. Uh, you don't need any of these complicated DAWs if the studio knows about Source RTL. Um, chances are they are already using Source Connect, and so are you. So with Source RTL, the studio and you can work together seamlessly and work to picture. And it's all done through the Source-RTL uh, system. There's a creator side, the studio, and the player, the talent side. All you guys have to have is Source Connect on each end, and this system working via the web will connect the two worlds together. Um, it's, it's a new innovation from Source Elements. Clearly should be being used by more studios. So get the word out to your network of clients and people you work with do anything to picture or ADR to give this a shot because it's a it's a it's a killer tool it looks like to me it's gonna a huge problem solver anyway that's source elements and source connect we appreciate their support we'll be right back to answer a phalanx of questions right after this hey guys this is Tom also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the audio body shop Snails like it too. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 38. Great discussion there so far, but we got lots of fascinating questions from the masses of people that watch this show every week. And we appreciate you sending us those questions. Uh, for example, our dear friend Diane Costello Merritt writes in, in reference to our discussion on the eyeball or on the mud flap. The mud flap what about the yeah. Chaotica eyeball? Which my immediate yeah. response is, well, what about it? Yeah. Uh, Similar. Yeah, but the Chaotica eyeball is basically, I don't know. Why do you think they give them away at all these voiceover conferences? There's a huge profit margin in those things. <laughs> oh, huge. God. And you, can, you. and you can use it for a volleyball. It's, uh, yeah. I know. Well, it's not, it's not you know, very good. Go ahead. One in, say, one in seven or one in eight, I don't know, times. I've heard it used in a certain situation and where it actually helps. I think it works with the uh, the Apogee mic pretty well. It calms the plosives because it's such a plosive, easy to pop mic. Um, and, you know, it dulls the mic a bit. So if it's overly bright, if you have a really bright mic, it will dull the sound. So... I guess what I'm saying is, if you don't like the sound of your mic, try shoving it in there, and maybe it'll sound better. Yeah. <laughs> but if you like the sound of your mic, it's not going to make it sound better. I guarantee it. Yeah. Absolutely guarantee it. It will not sound better. No. I, I, Uncle Roy, you know, experimented with putting socks in there as well. And, yeah. And then bagels. And that seemed to, <laughs> that seemed to help a whole lot. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. You get the next question. All right, this one's from CJ Ringwall, uh, asking regarding the Yamaha AG03 and 06 series mixer interface gadget doohickey boxes. Um, I, I don't hear much talk about these this interface anymore. I really like mine, and I was thinking about buying a spare. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure there were no issues with this unit that you have identified. Thanks. I That's like a good it. Good question. Actually, you've got one. Yeah, it works great. I got. I know I have several clients that have them, and generally they work great. I actually don't know of any failure issues. I don't think I've had anybody tell me, "Well, my Yamaha died." Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, have you, Dan? I had one issue with it. It, but it's still, by the way, in the audio chain for our show because our director is talking through that, and it's coming yeah. through to me, so I can hear the director. What happened with mine was, is I pulled the, you know, the old walk away with your headphone still plugged in oh, thing yeah. and cracked the, uh, the little, uh, the, the plastic ring where the headphone goes in. 
Yeah. And uh, and then it was suddenly on one channel, and it was like, okay, if I hold yeah. it like that. So it was. That's the only problem with it because the preamps in it are fabulous, and it's, it's got fine, and it's got some cool little stuff. It, I got it for when I do webinars, which isn't really necessary anymore because yeah. there's other ways to do it. Uh, but it gave you an extra, it gave you a loop back that allowed you to play audio back, you know, over, over your own audio. So for back right. from the computer. So it was like having a cart right. machine. If you know that radio right. reference, great for producing podcasts or doing webinars, teaching and stuff right. like that. Yeah. And, and it's got, it's got the built-in compressor and, uh, some other effects that you could play with, which were very, you know, which were cool. I think it's a great podcasting tool. Oh yeah. Cause of that. Right. Yeah. You know, if if you yeah. if you get the six, you know, with with two mic inputs in it instead. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good device. It's more on the surface. It's more complex than others, so it's got more things to understand, more controls, more inputs. It's a little more complicated than most most what most people need. But and it, the guts of it, the actual preamp and the the um, AD converters are the same as Steinberg because they share the same manufacturing. They're they're actually they're actually not bad at all. They just haven't been new in a while, right? And you know, there's they haven't really updated them much. So if you have one, get another one as a backup. No brainer. Have yeah. a second. Yeah, I mean, I they could probably update the software a little bit. Uh, maybe sure. give, give it a little bit more versatility. Refreshed. Yeah. Right. As opposed to having like plugins, so you don't really need an Apollo twin that you can have right. twenty million plugins anyway. Right. Uh, next right. question is from Shelley in New York City. Uh, on Tech Talk number 37, the last one before 38, uh, you talked about being scammed by vendors slipping an inferior mic into an, uh, an, 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 all, an all-encompassing bundle. The road folks offer an NT1 kit. It looks like the same mic, is it? Ooh, good question. Yeah. Um, so she said she started with a blue USB uh you know, a blue Yeti blue USB, Yeti, yeah. which evokes mass revulsion from everyone. <laughs> I know my ear is unsophisticated, but to me it sounds okay. Is that really bad? Love your show enough, even though I can only follow about 50%. Well, the, <laughs> the, 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 the question was really about the bundles and the, the road bundle is, well, you road, road went the other way, right? Right. They, well, they're a mic company. Right. And they and came up with an interface, an interface. The, the AI one. Yeah, so that's a, that's a darn good question. It's it's like the flip flop of the Focus Rights and the Personuses, right? That released mics. Now, Rode is a Rode mic company that released an interface. So they went the other way. I I'll tell you in my case, in my experience, the NT1 uh, bundled with the AI, that's what it's called, AI1, right? That's what they call it, has been really good. Um, the AI1. I don't like that it's, I wish it had a dedicated on off switch for the phantom power that didn't have to push the button on the front to do it. I don't know, quirky little nitpicky things, but sound quality wise, headphone levels wise. I liked it. It does the job. It sounds great. So I, Rode is unique. They, they seem to be, they seem to rarely screw much of anything up. Um, they're, they're very good. And, and that, that interface works great. So that, that is a unique case. Their, their mic AI one bundle is a, there's actually one I do recommend. Right. Yeah. The Focusrite bundle, they make that big red mic. It's a little better than it used to be, but man, what a piece mm -hmm. of crap that was. I mean, yeah, and that, which is a shame. It's really noisy. Yeah. And it's like, you know, why do you, you, you know, well, I bought it as a package, you know, and it comes with a pop screen mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, you know, a great interface will really bring out the crappiness of a lousy mic. <laughs> That's for sure. Which it really does. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the the Rode combo series is pretty good. And I know our friend Harlan sells combos and stuff like that with Mike Port Pros and stuff. But when he sells a that's a different kind of combo, right? Right. He's it's a different it's product. A kit that right. he picked the mic and, and an interface. Right. Whereas the other those others are like I don't know, how do you just just how do you how do you separate what those are? I would call it Harlan does as a kit. And those are like combos or I don't know. Hmm. Make sure you're careful when you're buying anything that's pre-combined. Make sure you know everything in the kit and that all of those pieces individually are good. Or ask us. Or ask pros. Yes. <laughs> get professional yeah. advice. You get Jeff Holman's question. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, he's our chat room moderator. Uh, he was polite. Didn't put it at the very beginning. Uh, <laughs> 
My brother used to do video and audio production 30 years ago. He just sent me an old Sennheiser shotgun mic he hasn't used since. It's called a K6. But when I go to Sennheiser's website, it looks like the K6 is just a power module. How do I find out what kind of Sennheiser shotgun mic is attached to the K6? It doesn't appear to have any markings on it other than the word Sennheiser and what looks to be an outline of a light bulb. <laughs> and more importantly, can I use it for voiceover? <laughs> yeah, you could use about anything, a lot of mics for voiceover, but does it sound any good? And that's what we care about. Right. So yeah, the K6. So this was part of a series of modular mics that they had. So they had a K6 power supply, which is where the plug, the jack goes in on the back, the XLR. And then you would screw on different capsules. And those can be little short ones to really long ones, shotguns. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know. I thought they would have a marking on there based on the, the light bulb logo. It sounds like it could have a, uh, super cardioid capsule. Cause when I think of a light bulb shape, I think of that as a cardioid shape ah. or super, super cardioid. Or super cardioid is the heart like this and super cardio would be more like that, I think. So that could be what it is. It's a super cardioid. Anyway. Try it out, Jeff. If if it sounds good, it is good. Everybody together now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah. yeah, and you know, a good quality Sennheiser mic. Thirty years later, if it wasn't abused and dropped and beat on, it's gonna still sound great years and years later. Yep. Love my Sennheiser. It was built to be a road warrior. Most of the the Sennheiser stuff was. They're built like tanks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Will Hansen asks, "Hello, everyone. Hello, Will." Uh, just wondering what your thoughts are on a ribbon style mic for VO recording. Well, I just happen to have one wow. right here. Uh, yeah, look at that one. I just, because I have a ribbon microphone collection. Yeah. Uh, you know, I considered that question many years ago when I was starting out in, in voiceover, you know, online, I'm like, hmm, these are interesting and you could find them on eBay and they're worth more now than what I bought them for. So, which is kind of nice. Uh, here's an, this is an Electra voice. V3 with, you know, variable resistance on it, which is kind of cool. Uh, ribbon mics. They were for a very specific purpose back then, and they required a lot of amplification, and they fell out of favor when condenser mics came around. Condenser mics were invented very early on as well, uh, but these were, you know, I guess cheaper to build and, you know. Probably more affordable, right? And, and to, more affordable, make. right. But, you know, companies like um, Electrovoice, Insure, and uh, uh, an RCA made some really high quality stuff uh, that you'll still see on eBay. And if you can get them to work, there's like one or two guys in the country who can refurbish these. Uh, a guy named Clarence Kane and, uh, and Stephen Sank. And uh, they, they refurbish the old RCAs and they make them sound fabulous. What brought them back... And why you're seeing the major manufacturers like even, you know, Rode and Electrovoice and so they all have a ribbon mic because with digital recording, it brings out even more subtlety that these mics really reveal. Now, are they good for voiceover? Who's our friend at AEA Microphones that we interviewed? Wes Dooley. Wes Dooley, who really explained. I mean, what's great about a ribbon microphone is that it's got a figure eight pattern that you can talk into either side and it's going to work either way. Uh, and, and he, he, I remember he demonstrated to us how, you know, you can whisper in it and really play with, you know, with two different voices. Proximity at the same effect time. too. Proxi a, lot of a lot of proximity effect. And, uh, they're great for, I think they're mostly used for recording, uh, guitars and things like that. I wouldn't use them next to a guitar. Things where but... you're recording a really bright source. Right. Something that's harsh, edgy, bright. This Ribbon. will soften it out. Lose it out a little bit. Yeah, it, it it really is nice, but for voiceover, I you like I, I I like using this if they if they can you do Roosevelt like December seventh nineteen forty one a day you know then you use a ribbon yeah and I of the and period I yeah uh, you know if you're trying to do something accurate and even then yeah. you take a lot of the low end off of it and make it sound like a like a nose yeah. rail yeah yeah I I you know there's so many of them out and a lot of them now are active. So they have a preamp built in to boost the signal, which makes some phantom powered ribbon mics weird, right? 
Um, I've just been meaning to demo one in a real world situation. I just never get around to it. I've been liking the figure eight pattern a lot. Uh, like the, the Vanguard V4 uh, figure pattern is I've really good. The figure eight pattern sounds great. So by that meaning, it should also sound great on a figure on a ribbon mic. Yeah. So I'll try one out one of these days. It's just been a really long time for me to really do it in, in the context of voiceover. Yeah. Well, you have to have a lot of clean gain to make one of them work. Because well, yeah, that's that's the whole idea of that phantom power thing is they're, they're supposed to be trying to fix that problem, right? By adding some amplification, that's what the cloud lifter was for, right? Remember our friend Roger Cloud, right? And it's a really high quality f ribbon mic, right? And then made the cloud lifter to help people boost their microphones, yeah, you know. And when he discovered people were using RE20s for podcasts, he's like. I this is fabulous and sold SM7 a lot of bees. Yeah. Oh uh, yes, they sold, made him a lot of yeah. money. Also a fat head, which I have one, which is yep. what I would always use on these to boost them up a little bit. A lot uh, of companies are making those things now too. Yeah, you know, and of course I learned how to build one, and we had one back when we were doing eWebs that's still there. He's a little broken, called Frank and Mike, but it was the best sounding ribbon mic we had, <laughs> and, <laughs> it's and I built it from scratch. Used it for a, yeah, on a few we, shows. We used yeah. it on the show for a while. Uh, you get Sam Stout's question. Oh, this is for me then. Hey, yeah. uh, Sam. This is from Sam Stout, and he says, I have a 416 shotgun mic going into an Audient ID 22, and to get an, an input of about minus 12 to minus 6 peak level, I'm assuming. I have to turn up the gain to around 4 o'clock. The recording always sounds clean, but I'm wondering if that's unusually high, uh, an unusually high gain setting or level. Thanks. No, it isn't, Sam. Um, actually, we talked about this on the show a few months ago uh, about how the gain structure on that and the way the gain tapering on the pot is uh, designed, that that is perfectly normal. In fact, four o'clock is not bad. I've heard people that need to be have it set almost almost all the way, and then they back it off just a skosh to get good level, depending on the mic. So. Yeah, it's it makes it a little bit harder to make fine gain adjustments uh, for that reason. Right. So, but that is that's to perfectly normal. All the Audient ID series seems to be that way. Yeah, I think people forget that again. All of this stuff was designed for making music. Music and music involves more sound pressure levels because when you sing, you sing loud. Unless you're singing really soft, like you know, if you're Billie Eilish which case you can't even hear her anyway. Uh, but it, it, mostly you're singing very loud and therefore it doesn't require as much gain. Voiceover, as we learned last week, you know, there are different voices, you know, your 10% voice, your 25% voice, your 50% voice. If you're talking normally conversationally, you're going to need a lot of gain for a condenser mic to pick you up, which is why we use studio condenser mics for voiceover. Uh, so you can get, take it all the way to four o'clock, as I like to say, and there's a sweet spot on most on on, on most uh, interfaces that's like you know between three and four o'clock. Now we discovered that on the ID series that there's sort of a different type of way. They have a different way of pushing the low end. The sweet that spots in a different place, right? It's like in the last ten percent, right? Rather in the middle. 30 percent right and there's so a lot of a little harder to yeah set. right all right josh keller asks dan george have either of you tested or investigated clean feed as an alternative to source connect i know source connect is the standard but could cf be a disruptor have you uh, checked out clean feed at all i've heard of people using it for some forms of production of podcasts and things like that um it's another as far, I mean, all these tools that run on Chrome, and this is another one of these tools that are just web services that run on Chrome, are using under the hood the exact same technology. They all just wrap in different bells and whistles and features, but it's still just running on Chrome using an audio codec built into Chrome, which Source Connect now, literally, it's called that, Source Connect now, no. Bad name. <laughs> I told them this. Bad name. But Source Connect Now has been doing this for free all along. It's always had this feature of doing live stream over audio over Chrome. Clean Feed does add some bells and whistles, and maybe some productions will find those useful. 
Um, I haven't used it enough to say, wow, this thing is a game changer because it doesn't seem to be. It's There's so many other tools that it's similar to that it doesn't really seem to stand out. So I don't think it's going to be a disruptor anytime soon um, because it's still just another rewrap of the same old technology uh, everybody else is using on Chrome. So my opinion. But okay. uh, you might find out differently when a big paying job comes along and says, we use clean feed. And when that happens, let us know. Yeah. I, and we're, we'll be waiting with bated breath. Yeah. Uh, Emmanuel Mendez Chumacero says, first time here. Just want to say thank you to the both of you. Opera singer, stage actor who finally delved into voiceover. Okay. I've seen your videos and are extremely, they are extremely helpful. Thank you. I've been building my own booth. Nice. I, I have mainly done audiobooks, which gives me a lot of room for noise floor that I can mix in my DAW. Mm. Fix. Yeah. That he can, uh, yeah, that's right. He can fix my DAW. Audition. audition my, yeah. yeah. My girlfriend is being sent out for some big VO promos, etc. I'm concerned that my noise floor isn't good enough for her stuff. I know they recommend 20 to minus 30 dB. However, what would be appropriate level in dBFS? Using Source Connect, what do clients expect your noise floor to be? A lot. I don't know what number is he's coming up with there. That's Let's... the problem. Yeah, I mean, we've we've addressed this before. When you give a number, you know, need to know what the units are. So you did say, what does it need to be in dBFS, which I think is dB full scale. Um, but 20 to 30 dB, I'm not sure what he's referring to. Um, and, oh, he says, thank you. You said my name right. Well yeah. done. Yeah. I would have made mincemeat out of that. Nicely done. Oh, thank you. Um, 20 to 30 dB. I'm, I'm assuming he's meaning like if you were to have an SPL meter, like a little device with a little meter on it and a microphone recording the room tone and seeing what the level is, that's maybe what he's talking about, 20 to 30 I'm not sure, that, but that's a pretty um, loud noise floor. At, uh, around I, I care more about what the meter shows me in my DAW, and that is recorded in negative numbers. And so, when you hit record and you just open up the mic and record room tone, the peak meter should be going up and down below minus fifty to minus fifty-five, or better. Um, if it's much higher than that, you might have some real issues. Could be rumble in there. Rumble is not that big of a deal. Not not, not hard to fix. But other kinds of noise may be a real problem. So we, that's one of those things that's very hard to answer without hearing actual samples. So that's where our my sound check and Dan's specimen collection cup Let's give it a come listen. into play. Because I can't answer that without, without actual audio to go by. All right. Well, after a name well pronounced, that's going to do it for all your questions. And we <laughs> appreciate that. You live in Southern California for a while. You, you get to know those types of names and you mm -hmm. say them right. Like living in Buffalo, you get good with Polish names. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, that's going to do it for right now. We'll be right back, though, because we have some important messages to let you know about. And then George and I will wrap things up right after those. So stay tuned. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. What question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the voheroes.com free getting started in VO course. You heard right. It's free. 
And it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Of course you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. So our good friend Harlan Hogan is on vacation in Maine. Isn't it gorgeous? Anyway, he wanted me to tell you that he hasn't missed doing any work while he's on vacation, hanging out on somebody's yacht, because he's got his porta booth with him. This is a great unit. It makes it easy for you to travel on the road, and it's easy to take apart and put together. All you have to do is zip it up or unzip it in this particular case, and it all just folds up into a nice, neat carrying case. The Porta Booth Plus, plus the Porta Booth Pro, which you see right here. The Porta Booth Pro, the bigger model, is $369.99. The Plus, $199.99. And the bag is on sale for $49.95, but you can get it in a combo for $248.95. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com right now and get your Porta Booth Plus or Pro. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS.TV. So, so our, our good, good friend, friend Harlan, Harlan Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> okay. Fix that in post. Well, as our, our, our beloved Tom and Ray Maliachi used to say, you've wasted another perfectly good hour <laughs> watching oh, voiceover man. body shot. This was great. This, love this show. We love getting questions from you guys and it's just fun to talk about. And uh, it, it's almost like stump the chumps only you can't. Uh, <laughs> it really is. Uh, next week on the show, another great guest. If you think the guests we've been having this year have been great, who knows who we'll have next time? Somebody even better. <laughs> uh, we do have donors, though. People, you know, there's a way you can donate to the show if you really like to support what we do. You know, it's almost like we're playing instruments out there in the park and you're know, like holding the hand out. But if you like what you're doing, you know, I mean, if if you see someone like who's panhandling in a, in a parking lot, and they're just like panhandling or somebody's playing the accordion. Are you going to give money to the guy playing the accordion? And the guy just got his hand out. Yeah. We're kind of busking here. I guess. That's right. I think that's the word I was looking for there. That's the uh, word. And if you'd like to help us out, we really appreciate it. Uh, and we have donors and you guys do it and they're great. And this week we have. We've got Michelle Blanker, Christopher Epperson, Philip Sapir, Trey speaks for you. Trey. Shelly Avellino, Dominic Carlos, Natasha Merchevka. Yes. Brian Page. <laughs> Mr. George A. Whittem, my dad. Patty Gibbons and Diana Birdsall. All righty. Hey, you know, eventually we're going to get out of here. Well, I'm, we'll still be in here. But my, 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 my good friends, George and our director, Sue, will join us back here in this booth. Uh, and we'll start showing your booths again. Right now, it's Nightline. So we like having the news set. But uh, send us pictures of your uh, studios. We've been getting a few over the last couple of weeks, and some of them are really cool. You know, even if it's a blanket fort, if it sounds good, it is good. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All right. Giving them a little bit more extra added value there. A little extra weight. Yes. Uh, our thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room. Great job tonight getting those questions to us. Sumerlino, another kick butt job in the uh, in the uh, tech area. Wrangling getting, the vMix Windows gods. Uh, <laughs> making it all happen. from Not even from here. By, you know, remotely. All over Zoom. <laughs> I, it's amazing. And Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, hopefully you're getting something out of this. You must be because you keep showing up every week. 
you know, we get like 3,000, you know, views a week with this show. And we, we went over 150,000 downloads of the podcast this week. So we really appreciate it all. We're here for you. We want you to be, we, we want your technology to not be a problem. We want you to go out and be voice actors and let the equipment do the work for you. And let us do that so your work can be done by your equipment without you having to do with too much with it. Because in the long run, if it sounds good, it is good. And that's going to do it for us this week on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is Voice Over Body Shop. Or VO. BS. All righty. Have a good one, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Stay safe.